Welcome to Cincy Reformed. I'm Pastor Brandon. I'm joined with Pastor Zach. We are pastors at Westside Reformed Church, a URC congregation in Cincinnati, Ohio. And today we wanted to talk about prayer. We, we've spoken about prayer in the past. We've spoken about liturgical prayers and um, things about liturgy and that kind of thing, which I'll um, link in the show notes page. But today we want to spend some time talking about what is often called you know, prayer from the heart. Um, prayers that are perhaps not pre-written or pre-thought of, but kind of thinking on the spot, praying um, out loud from the heart to God. And we wanted to talk about some helpful practices and, and some helpful ways in which the Christian can do that. But first, I wanted to read from the Heidelberg Catechism to kind of start off our, our conversation. Uh, question 116 of the Heidelberg Catechism asked the question, why do Christians need to pray? And the Heidelberg Catechism says, because prayer is the most important part of the thankfulness God requires of us, and also because God will give His grace and Holy Spirit only to those who continually and with heartfelt longing ask God for these gifts and thank Him for them. So prayer is an important part of the Christian life. And so uh, in this episode, we want to give some guidance on, on how to pray. And one of the helpful acronyms that have just, you know, been a, uh, I don't know where it originated. Do you know the origin of it? I don't. Um, but it's, it's, pretty, um, it's pretty pervasive in, in terms of the church and, and even the history of the church. But it's the acronym ACTS, A-C-T-S. Um, A stands for adoration, C stands for confession, T stands for thanksgiving, and S stands for supplication. And it's a helpful way to structure your prayer. In fact, when uh, my children and I are doing our morning de devotions, um, I'll usually go on a whiteboard and I'll write acts down. And we'll say, okay, what do we love about God today? You know, what, what are we thinking about? And they'll shout out things like, you know, I love that He's all powerful. I love that He's all knowing. I love that He 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 cares for us. And they'll just shout out all of these answers, and I'll write them all down on the board. Then I'll say, what do we? What, what sins do we, do we want to confess today? And then they'll shout out things like, well, I was I was rude, or I need to be more patient, or whatever. And then we'll just kind of go down the line, um, writing these things on a board to give us a. a, a a bit of a structure to pray, and then we'll open in prayer and kind of uh, work through the, the outline. Now, you probably won't write it down for yourself, but this is a helpful, I think, flow in, in terms of kind of a, a mental uh, flow to go through, working through these different steps, which really kind of mirror and mimic a, a worship service where we begin with adoration and go into confession and thanksgiving and things and so this is i think a helpful flow but zach maybe you can start us off talking about you know adoration what is it why, why included in prayer do we see examples of this in the bible absolutely this is probably the part of the acronym that's most neglected i would imagine i think that it's rare for me to hear another christian pray not even look at my own prayer life and just think that oftentimes I just rush to supplication. I oftentimes, or maybe Thanksgiving, right? Confession, because it's very practical, it's in the moment kind of a thing. But when we think about adoration, we're really thinking about who God is and simply to praise him for who he is or to simply uh, step back into lose yourself in wonder at the mystery that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And to celebrate that God, to praise and worship that God, not necessarily because of something he's done for you, that would be maybe a little more of thanksgiving, but just simply who, uh, who God is. That is really what we mean by adoration. And that's often how our worship service opens up after we hear a call to worship. M most of the time, our first song is a song of just a simple hymn of praise to celebrate who God is, to um, worship and glorify him, to kind of begin the service in a way where you know, we, we have a, a high view of the glory and the holiness of God. And that's a really important place to begin your prayer. Because if you don't begin with an understanding of God's glory mm -hmm. and holiness, it's going to be very difficult to move then into confession and uh, thanksgiving and supplication later on. So a few places from the Psalms, uh, Psalms are obviously the uh, prayer book um, of the Bible. And so a few places in the Psalms that give us some help in terms of how we might formulate our own thoughts in terms of uh, adoration and prayer. 
So from Psalm 8, verse 1, O Lord, our, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. You can also think here about Psalm 29, another psalm that reflects upon God with re relation to his creation. And that psalm begins like this. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. And then the a final uh, collection of verses here to again demonstrate what adoration looks like is from Psalm 145. Again, we've been seeing about uh, the, the name of God and the glory of God, his holiness. Now we're reading about his greatness. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall commend your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds, and I will declare your greatness. They shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness, and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. So, uh, encouragement to begin your prayer with this acronym of ACTS by adoring God with that time of adoration. Mm -hmm. Brian, would you like to take the uh, second part of confession? Yeah, so um, the C is confession of sin. And it, it, it makes sense, right? You're approaching a, a holy God. You're confessing His holiness, His righteousness, His glory and majesty, and all, the, all of these things. And you're also very aware of your own sinfulness. And so it's, I think, very appropriate to also confess, humble yourself before God. Um, as, as John says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we go to God confessing our, our sins, knowing that he's the one who forgives us in Christ. And so... Um, repenting of sin and confessing of sin, that, that is not something that only happens when you first become a Christian, but it's a pattern that happens um, all throughout our lives, each and every day. We, we um, have a, a life of repentance and confession as we, as we are aware of our sinfulness and God's holiness. We go to God in prayer. Um, one of the, the chief places where we see this in the Bible uh, is in Psalm 51. Uh, where David is confessing um, his his sin, and as we think about the life of David, we see various places in, in his life where he sinned, most notably with Bathsheba, where he um, saw her nakedness and uh, basically forced himself upon her, and then when she conceived and had a, a child, he then conspired to the killing of her husband, and uh, so here we see uh, David, and he's going to God, and this is just a great model. In fact, a lot of the rest of the Bible builds on a lot of the key phrases here. Uh, so, for example, it opens up by saying, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgression, wash me thoroughly from my iniquities, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgression, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words, and blameless in your judgments. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth, in inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret, uh, in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear the joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my transgression. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. So just a, a heartfelt confession and plea that God would forgive sin and, um, and restore and renew in, in Christ. Uh, with, with also with the confidence that he does here and he does, in fact, do so, as John uh, mentioned. So, Zach, we want to talk about the, the next piece. After we, we uh, adore God and we, we sing him praises, we confess our sin, humble ourselves, and then thanksgiving. That's right. I think that thanksgiving is so intimately connected with faith. 
as Brandon was just saying, we don't come to confess our sins to God and really wonder if he's going to, because we have the promises made to us in 1 John 1, 9, for example. And so then it's imperative for us, having confessed our sins, and because we believe in Jesus Christ, to then give thanks to God, first for forgiving our sins, of course, and for imputing to us the righteousness of Jesus Christ as our covering for all eternity, but then to move on into other forms of thanksgiving, because by faith we're claiming the goodness and the graciousness of our triune God in Christ. And so we begin to think about reasons for thanksgiving, for uh, spiritual blessings, for things within our, our ordinary common life that warrant thanksgiving. For example, God providing us with our daily bread upon our uh, dinner table. We, we, we recount all the many things that God has done for us. And that's one of the things that you see in the Psalms and Psalms of Thanksgiving. They, they say uh, that they are thankful and, the, and they also then go into detail to recount exactly what God did. I was once like this. I cried out to the Lord. God rescued me and answered my prayer. And now I give you thanks of God for that. And so that's a good thing for us to include within our prayers of Thanksgiving. A few verses here from the Psalms that really help to clarify this, the importance of thanksgiving. From Psalm 7, verse 17, the psalmist writes, I will give to the Lord the thanks due to his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord the Most High. From Psalm 9, verse 1, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. So that part of recounting his deeds is, such a key part of that thankfulness. And then from Psalm 69, I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. So do not rush into uh, supplication. Do not forget to give thanks for the many ways that God has blessed you in the past. Uh, for in fact, why would God want to bless you in the future if you're not thanking him for what you've already uh, done for him, what he's already done for you? Um, that just doesn't make any sense, does it? So make sure that uh, thankfulness for uh, past answered prayers and past blessings is a very key part of your uh, prayer life. So Brandon, we'll finish off with supplication. Yeah, so supplication is, again, the kind of the, the one that a lot of people just go right to, right? You know, they they um, have an issue or, or something's going down and they just go right into supplication. Um, I think, too, it's helpful to note that um, the tendency to go right into supplication usually happens when you view prayer as like a last ditch emergency effort and you don't have a kind of like a rhythm of prayer. So like, you know, th those who wake up in the morning and they just, and they go, go to God in prayer, it's more natural to have like an ax rhythm. But if you are kind of prayer less until things get hairy, then it, um, then it's probably, you're going right to supplication at that point. Uh, but no, it, it's, it's helpful to kind of walk through praising God humbling myself in confession of sin, thanking him for all of the blessings, all of the gifts. I mean, we're reminded in you know James chapter 1 that all good gifts come from our Heavenly Father. And so, you know, we, we give thanks for things like uh, entertainment or, or a spouse or if we, um, I don't know, had a, had a good steak or w whatever it is, all good gifts, every good gifts. And so there's so, so much to give thanks for. And then going into, now here's my petitions. Um, and as we're giving, as we're, um, as we're asking for things and we are, uh, asking him to bless us or asking him to heal us or do various things in our lives, uh, we're not viewing it as like a genie in the bottle. Like we're going to rub this magic lamp and get all of our wishes done or anything like that. Uh, John reminds us in first John five fourteen where he says, and this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask him anything, According to his will, he hears us. And so God, of course, is going to answer things according to, to his will. Um, I always re remind my children that God answers every prayer. Sometimes it's yes, sometimes it's no, sometimes it's not yet, um, hold on. Um, but there's really, in a, in a sense, no quote-unquote unanswered prayers. Um, but God always hears us. He always um, answers our prayers. He, he delights to 
to hear from us. He delights to answer prayer. God has, has ordained that, that he would um, give us blessing and give us things as we ask for them in prayer. In fact, you know, Christ at one point said, you don't have because you have not asked. And so supplication is, I think, an important part of prayer, you know, as we're thinking about it properly. Here's a couple um, places in the Bible where we see this supplication, not only for ourselves, but for other people. And that's one thing that I try to uh, remind my children of as well, is we also pray for other people. And so I try to get them to, to be uh, otherly minded as well, instead of, well, you know, I want this, this and that. Um, you know, how can we be praying for family and friends who are, who are sick or need help? Uh, so th- uh, 3 John 1, uh, 2 says, Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. And so he's, he's praying for the church that he's writing to. He's praying for the good health. He's praying for their soul. Um, Psalm 4, verse 1. Uh, this is a, a, a petition for, for, for self where the psalmist says, Answer me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. You have given me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. So this is a plea that God would, God would hear him and answer him. In uh, Psalm 6 verse 4, the psalmist says, turn, O God, deliver my life. Save me for the sake of your steadfast love. Again, a petition that God would deliver his life and rescue him. So supplication, we pray for ourselves, but we also pray for for other people. Um, anything else you want to add to that, Zach? Yeah, I think that maybe one thing just to clarify, I can imagine perhaps someone listening to this episode and maybe wrongly understanding what we're suggesting here. We want to make clear that this is not, this the act is not an absolute rule for every prayer that you offer up. Right. Just to be clear about that. Right. This is a helpful biblical pattern that I think will help us to have good biblical balance within our prayers. Mm-hmm. If we think about the Psalms, for example, the inspired prayers, um, they don't all follow the ACTS acronym. But this ACTS acronym just helps us to make sure that we are not leaving um, something out of our prayer that's important. So if we came to the Lord and only came with supplications, well, we're missing a lot of things that we should be including, biblically Mm -hmm. speaking. And maybe over the course of a day, maybe some of your prayers are following this pattern. Maybe others are, you know, more um, things got hairy, uh, it, to use your, yeah, that's a phrase from earlier. And you're in the middle of a business meeting, it gets hairy, and you don't have time to fall on your knees and pray according to Acts. So there, there are different times for, the, for different ways of praying. But what we're suggesting here, just to be clear, is to have this kind of a structure that's going to be your uh, part of your regular rhythm. Maybe in a future episode, we could you know talk about the Lord's Prayer yeah. as a similar kind of a thing of structuring device mm-hmm. for personal prayer, not just to say the Lord's Prayer as one of the Gospels says, mm-hmm. "Pray this," but to pray like this, mm-hmm. as the other uh, says. So, so I think that's probably one thing um, to to note here in closing. Any other thoughts? Um, yeah, no, I was just going to echo, you know, what you said about, we don't always have time to do acts. Um, so, uh, the other day I passed a car accident and I wanted to pray for the person who was in the car accident and the, and the police were there. I wanted to pray for them. So, I mean, I, I didn't have time to like go through, well, now we got to do adoration mm-hmm. then I have to give confession. I, we, I just went straight to supplication for that person. And so, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's helpful to note, like, this isn't like this, this rhythm that has to be done every single time, mm-hmm. but something that, that helps us to be full in our prayers. Absolutely. One other thought maybe on this is that when we think about supplication, I think that it was helpful what Brandon was saying about um, earlier on about uh, thanksgiving and giving um, thanks for all things. But also, we should uh, bring supplication for all things. But w- and so when we say supplication for all things, then we certainly are including things like people who are sick, and um, if somebody's traveling somewhere for traveling mercies, but I also encourage our listeners to go beyond that because oftentimes that becomes the place where um, well-intentioned Christians only think about supplication about those things. I don't know how often I hear uh, Christians praying for someone's holiness and someone else's, um, you know, faithfulness and marriage and things that you oftentimes see the Apostle Paul praying for, faith, love, and hope. And so 
I think bringing those three um, theological virtues into our supplication for ourselves and for other people is a very important thing also to consider in terms of supplication. Normally, we just don't rush to those felt needs and just and just stay there because mm-hmm. health and safety becomes the, sure. the basic thing that everyone wants to pray for all the yeah. time. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, having a more biblically informed uh, view on supplication, I think, would be is is wise. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, hope that's been helpful for you. Uh, thanks for joining us this week at the uh, on the uh, Cincy Reformed podcast. We are again sponsored by Westside Reformed Church. A Reformed Congregation in Cincinnati's West Side. We hope you join us again uh, next week. Until then, God bless.